Hello everyone, Elspeth here and welcome back to Medieval Engineers. So this is kind of where we're at at this point with our, I guess main build is what this is going to be here. And I'm hoping that this video looks okay. Um, the reason for my uncertainty <laughs> is that this is the first recording that I have done since I got a new monitor. So the new monitor is a 21 by 9 aspect ratio and this is kind of going to be the first test, so to speak, of how that's going to work. So I am crossing my fingers a little bit. We'll see what it looks like after the recording is finished and it renders. Um, kind of crossing my fingers and hoping that I've scaled it back down to 1920 by 1080. We'll see how that goes. So, yeah, I got a little distracted last week. Um, and by distracted, I mean thoroughly caught up in actually learning a, well, not really a new game, but one that I haven't spent a lot of time on. So, it was a significant learning experience for me. And that would be Space Engineers. So the sibling, maybe older brother of Medieval Engineers. Um, I've had the game for a while. I just really haven't ever put a lot of time into trying to learn how to play it. So I sort of disappeared down that rabbit hole this last week. And boy, that's a rabbit hole. It really is a fun game, but there's just so much to it that it's, it's a little bit complicated trying to learn. It doesn't have the same tutorial system that Medieval Engineers does. So you do definitely have to put in a bit more work. And what I'm doing right now is trying to get the entrance set up for our canal system, because that is today's goal, is to actually get a canal in. Now, something that I'm not sure about is whether or not it will actually fill with water because this is completely new. I haven't ever tried anything like this before. So this is really going to be a very interesting experiment. I'm hoping that I can actually get it to fill with water and will eventually be able to sail a ship through this canal. That's the hope. I don't know for sure how well that's going to work. So that's what we're going to find out today. So first off, obviously, canal walls. And what I'm doing is using these walls instead of just the cubes as the edges because these are going to help me actually measure the distance, basically, so that I have them far enough apart and I think, so if I spin this back around, that's definitely not wide enough. This, I'm thinking, is a, a decent amount of space for a smaller ship, like a, a small supply ship that's going to be possibly going across, going through this canal, uh, maybe going to the mine. You never know, maybe there'll be something else built up along there, some small things. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm not thinking like, oh, let's make a passageway big enough for like a capital ship to pass through. That's definitely not, not in the plan. 
but I think this might work. So, because this would actually be super boring to watch me do this whole thing, I am going to finish building up these walls, at least for a portion, because I really do want to test whether or not I'll be able to get this filled with water. So I want to get some of the walls up here, some of the canal barriers, so to speak, and see if we can get some water in here. And then, if the experiment works, I will fill in the rest of the walls. So, I will see you in just a few moments when I have this prepped for our first test. Be right back. Hello, everyone. We are back. I don't have the entire, the entire canal built as you can see, but this is a pretty good size for a test section, and you can also get a nice overview of the beginnings of this build here. Um, but anyhow, let's get started. So, let's take this nice voxel hand here, and let's see, I'm hit F so that I can make some changes to it. Um, snap to voxel grid. I don't know that that does much, but I'm going to give it a try. Wow, these used to start much bigger. Let's go with a one by one by one. Okay. Remember how to use these. Yep, there we go. Actually, it is kind of nice having it snap to the grid. All right. So, well, now... This is going to be the tricky part. I can go through and remove all this sand here. That's actually pretty easy. But making sure the water actually goes all the way in. That's going to be the tricky part. And yeah, I know technically, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe it would have been better over here. Maybe it doesn't really matter. There's, uh, there's a, lot of, a lot of sand here. And I think I'm going to make this bigger. About three and a half wide. What do we think of that? Does that work better for our purposes here? Now, I don't want to completely have no voxels just because then then there's really nothing for the structure to kind of grip to so to speak but we do want to get rid of a fairly good chunk and we still have water here so I'm going to say that this is probably going to be a successful experiment. Ah, let's get that out of my hand. Wow. Ooh. I just thought of something. Tunnels. Not for right here, of course. We're already doing one thing. We're definitely not going to change our minds and try to do something else with this. Not at all. Um, let's see though, height, let's do that, and for anybody wondering how in the hell I'm doing any of this, what I did was I saved my game, I exited to the main menu, and then I went into load game. And I loaded up, or sorry, I didn't load just yet. So I went into the loading screen. I selected the save game. I hit the settings and I changed it to creative. From there, I loaded up the game. So now I have my world, but in creative mode, because there's absolutely no way that I'm going to dig all this out. 
not gonna happen. Sorry. And now we have a canal. Now, the one thing that I don't really like about this is that I wish we could raise the water level because ships passing through this canal are going to be really far below the level of, like, everything else. But I think that's okay. I think that's okay. And in case you're wondering, um, with the whole creative mode thing comes the ability to fly. If you hit X in creative mode, you can fly. So that's how I'm doing that. And I think this idea is actually going to work. So obviously, I have a lot of walls to make. And, you know, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I am. And I am going to... I'm going to make them in creative. Because it's going to take me forever to do this in survival. Largely, because I'd have to figure out how to actually get down here. So, I'm going to do this part in creative. Then I'm going to load it back up in survival. I'm actually really pleased with this. Of course, obviously, there is still going to be some work to do. Some of these walls will come back out, which is part of why I don't feel too bad about making them in creative mode, because I'm going to need, um, wow, drew a blank for a minute there. I'm going to need stairs down here. There's going to be a lot of other stuff that needs to be built. So some of these will be destroyed. By building them in creative mode, I don't feel so bad about the loss of stone. Wow. This is awesome, and I need to spend some time looking at pictures of canals in real life, because where I live, we don't have canals. So, I haven't ever seen any. And I do want this to look, you know, as realistic as you can get in a video game. So that's going to be a task. If anybody knows of a, a really nice, realistic, effective canal, let me know. Well, shit. Hmm. Okay, that definitely did not work out that well. See, this is another... Excellent reason. I'm not going to keep the steel hammer. Excellent reason to be doing this in creative mode. Okay. I also need to get rid of this. Come on. And I love how your shovel just, like, goes through things. It's the most random thing. Like, seriously? Okay. Now, see, I may have made this a little too wide. Oh, problem is trying to actually see what I'm doing down here. Okay. Yeah, see, I made it too wide. So there's no... I, you guys actually probably can't see that because it's really difficult to see. Um, but there's no support underneath it. So I need to actually add some voxels back in. And to do that, you can see where it says material stone. That's the type of material that this is going to be placing. And if I push the bracket keys on my keyboard, it'll rotate through those. So now, we need to go back to a more manageable height. And call this back to me. Um, maybe I don't want this part to snap to the grid. So if that's approximately where it is. Yeah. 
Let's add in some stone behind it. I don't want it to actually go through, but I do want it to have some support so that we don't have to worry about structural integrity. Sometimes it's nice being able to push this thing away from you. Other times you really do need it much closer. A little bit there. We may have to do this to the other side as well. Um, and I need to be underground for a minute here. Where is, uh, there you are. To actually be able to, whoops see what I'm doing. It's really, really hard, if not impossible, to actually successfully maintain your position underground. So, what am I running into? Oh. The sea floor. That's what I'm running into. That's usually what you run into when you drop into the water. Sea floor, riverbed, bottom of the lake, lake bed. Okay, let's go to N and let's take a look at, oops, our structural integrity. See, now this is a problem because you can see the blocks that are white, those are actually embedded in the ground, embedded in the voxels. So they have no structural integrity concerns. But these ones here, which are not, those are the ones that I'm worried about. So those are the ones that we're gonna try and get some earth under to support them because I really don't want this entire structure coming crashing down. As as much as I do enjoy playing in uh, survival, it is definitely trickier because you have to, if something breaks that's in kind of an awkward and hard to reach place, you're kind of in trouble. This, mm, this makes it a lot easier. Okay. Well, kind of veered out more than I really intended it to, but that's okay. There we go. All right, hit N again, turn that off, and let's continue building. And it's a lot easier to go back and kind of trim out these pieces because you can tell, obviously, I curved a little bit. So I don't really want to do that. So we're going to kind of clean that up. And we're also going to bring this out of it because we're going to have the same structural integrity issue with our larger blocks when we go to put those in. And those are actually only going to go up on the top. I'm not going to worry about sinking them all the way down. That would be an enormous amount of work. Partly because I would have to dig down far enough to actually get to this. First, sand grass, sand dark. How about just sand? There we go. There we go. Let's have some nice sand. Bring everything back to that sandy look here. At least, you know, where it's visible. Cut that off. There we go. Okay. That, that's my 
much better. Okay. Let's get this side finished up. And part of me wants to build something really, really big over here. The other part of me, the sensible part of me that, you know, remembers my computer specs, is reminding myself that from everything that I have seen and heard, the lag gets really, really bad when you have more items connected together. So, and what's connected over there is fairly small. Right now, this is fairly small. But if I were just to kind of keep adding on to this, it would keep getting bigger and bigger. And then I would run into problems with lag. Now, in an effort to avoid that, why does it not want to place things there? Don't argue with me, just place stuff. Um, in an effort to avoid that, what I'm going to try to do is to keep from connecting items too much. And I'm going to have to double check the workshop, but I'm pretty sure, actually I'm 99.9% .9 sure, that there are mods which will allow you to utilize, you know, dirt and shovel and kind of lay down your own dirt paths and roads and so on. Now, obviously, the game doesn't really treat those like roads because they're not, they're decorative, but I'm thinking that we might give that a try. Sorry if you can hear the uh, small shrieking demon in the background. Come here, Screamer. Oh, there we go. You can sit in my lap. All right. Sorry about that. Had to pick up the cat. Yes, Screamer. He's very happy. He's now in my lap, and uh, we'll see how much he makes the mouse jiggle. Hopefully he leaves that hand alone. Probably not, but we can hope. All right, but yes, anyhow, back to what I was saying before he distracted me. Um, yes, I'm going to try. Wow, I am really very easily distracted. Um, sorry, but you know, I kind of have been for a while, so I guess that's not really too shocking. But I'm going to try to kind of have it look, mm, we're in a sandy environment, so I don't know... I don't really know the best way for the streets to look. I don't know if we can give them a little bit of a dirtier look. I don't know if that even makes sense, a dirtier sandy look. But something that makes it look like a street. And then that way, if we have our buildings connected by streets, and they're not all attached to the same grid, I'm hoping that we can avoid some of the issues with lag that I've heard other people talk about. So, yeah, I'm crossing my fingers. If you have tried this, please let me know down in the comments what your experience with it was. Did it work? Was it just a big waste of time? How did it end up looking? Anything and everything would be great. Oh. What? My steel shovel can't dig through stone? Why not? I'm in creative mode. Really? Go. And speaking of creative mode, I really did want to keep the series... I wanted to stay in survival mode because I wanted this to be a little bit more 
practical and because I also wanted to see how much you can really do in survival, right? I could go into creative and have something spectacular built in no time, but it's not really much of a challenge. Unlike getting sand off walls, which is an extreme challenge. So that's why I'm trying to stay in survival where I can. Obviously, a massive earth moving project like this, this is really hard to do in survival. And this is something that I don't know, maybe if you were playing on a server and you had a bunch of people to work on this project, maybe then you could do it in survival. But for just myself, no, not at all. This is way too big to attempt to do by hand. Hence, creative mode. Is that deer just like walking around in circles? I think it is. Wow. Okay. Um, hi, Mr. Deer. How are you? Oh, look at that. Now he can run. All right. So really, this is pretty much going to do it for today. I know this might be a little bit of a shorter episode by the time I'm done editing, but I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more. And while we're talking about subscriptions, oh my gosh, thank you guys so much to all of the new subscribers. I'm, I'm really amazed. I just, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. It means so much to me that there are so many people who actually find these videos good enough or helpful enough that you want to watch them and to see more of them. That's just absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to try not to disappear down another Space Engineers rabbit hole. It's just, it's a really challenging game in a way that Medieval Engineers and Rising World are not. Um, so, yeah, that's... It's, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's been actually really a lot of fun to, to have something that's that challenging to work on. But I will try not to disappear into it. And before anybody asks, I am nowhere near good enough to attempt to do any kind of videos in Space Engineers at this point in time. So that will not be happening. What I might do occasionally is release a few creative speed build type things. We'll see how that goes. I haven't really tried to speed up footage too much. Um, so I'm not really sure if that's going to look very good, but I might try that. Okay. I'm going to shut up now because I could just kind of ramble on all afternoon, but I am really excited. I think that this has worked really well and I'm excited to actually maybe next episode, if I can gather enough wood, maybe we can actually try and build a small ship and actually sail through our canal and see how it feels. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you so much, everyone. And a huge, huge thank you to all of the new subscribers. I am so incredibly happy that you're joining us on this crazy little wild adventure. And I will see you all next time. Have a great day.